example of a doctrine. Give me one example of doctrine. God has revealed this. Ten commandments. One thing is this is irreversible. Sometimes we buy jacket that's reversible, right? Yeah? Have you had a jacket like that? You can invert it and you can still wear it and it's good. Reversible. But a doctrine is irreversible. Classic example is John 14, 6. In John chapter 14, verses, verse 6, what, does, what did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's a doctrine. It can never change. Jesus is always the way, the truth, and the life. It will never change. So it's irreversible. is not made by man. It's revealed by God. That's a big difference. Because the next one is discipline. This is a man-made. a mass when the priest is always his, on, facing on his back on, on the people when the priest would be doing stuff like on the altar and the, the people are behind him that's, that's an example of a discipline it can change number one it's man made Jesus says all of this will come to pass but not a word not a word of God will come to pass not a word if it's a word of God, it never changes. But man made, it can change. Big difference between discipline and like no meat on Fridays. It's man made, it can change. So when people accuse you or the church, oh, you are changing too. Yeah, what changes? Are the disciplines, those man-made regulations. But those revealed by God never change. They never change. They remain the same. So you make that distinction. Okay? Just like the tradition, there's a big T and there's a small T. A big T tradition remains the same forever. Like immaculate conception. It will never change. The assumption, the ascension, the presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Those will never change. Those will never change. What about celibacy? Can that change? Yes. Is that man made? Yes. Absolutely. It's man made. It's a discipline. It can change. Yeah. Well, what about woman priests? No. no. <laughs> it's a gray area. You know why? Because Jesus never said, He never said, only male can be apostles. But what He did was, all His apostles were male. That's what He did. Yes? So that's the difference between doctrine and discipline. And then the last one is market conception. This is coming, that's why I'm adding this. Who is 
the baby in the Immaculate Conception? <laughs> Who is the baby here? Who was immaculately conceived? It was Mary. A lot of, ask the people, ask the Catholics in the pew. Everybody will say Jesus. Because it's December. And you see the lights in many houses. Even the cemetery here has lights. Yeah, that side. Immaculate conception. Mary was the baby. Where was she conceived? In the womb of Saint Anne. Yeah, in the womb of Saint Anne. I mean, the Saint, the real Saint Anne. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the real one. <laughs> Not the fake one. <laughs> she was conceived inside the womb of Saint Anne. There's another thing. I'm giving this to you because it's coming December 8th. That's the Immaculate Conception. There's a lot of misconception about Immaculate Conception. Number one, the baby was the Virgin Mary. Number two, the Blessed Mother, although she was born without original sin, it was not her doing. She did not deserve it. She needed a Savior herself. It was through the anticipated marriage won by Jesus Christ himself. Anticipated because Jesus was to be born yet. Through, his, through the Jesus' death and resurrection. And of course Mary was preserved from original sin. This is the complete Immaculate Conception dogma. Dogma is another word for... For... Doctrine. Doctrine is like, is uh, similar to dogma, can never change. The mysteries of the rosary, is that doctrine or discipline? Discipline. It's discipline. It can change. In fact, both J.P. second changed it. He added five mysteries, didn't he? It was 15, now it's 20 mysteries of the rosary. So what are the other dogmas? Or doctrines? All the big tea, the, the uh, sacred traditions, the magisterium, immaculate conception, real presence of God, of Jesus Christ. 
the Holy Eucharist, the seven sacraments, they will change. They will never change. Question?
And what did Jesus say? Throughout Israel, I haven't seen such great faith. Go, your servant has been healed. So whatever you ask of him, just believe and have faith. He will do it for you. There's a catch in his time. In his time, not your time. Remember, God has no time like you and me to. You're going to ask God, God, please do this tomorrow. I need this tomorrow first thing before 9 o'clock, God. <laughs> you cannot say that. It's not a body prayer. So, faith moves rain clouds. Tuesday, Luke 10. God reveals himself to the childlike. What does it mean, childlike? Innocent. Yeah, innocent. What, 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 what's a typical child like? Very trusting. Yeah, very trusting, right? They believe whatever they... They are told to. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes, even if we... There's no such thing as kidding with the child. Because they take things seriously. Right? I remember my son, we were just kidding with him. We said, uh, how come you are white and your brother is not as white? <laughs> oh, that stuck to his head. <laughs> Maybe I'm adopted. <laughs> That's being childlike, you understand? Very trusting. And God reveals himself to such and such. You don't question, you don't evaluate, you don't analyze. Abraham was 70 years old when he heard a voice. Anyone here who is 70? Or close to? <laughs> Abraham was 70 and he heard a voice. Pack up and go. What do you mean go? Go where? Don't ask, just go. Imagine that. If you hear that voice tonight, <laughs> I'm going to back up and go. But, but Father, my house is very good. I have a perfect location. It's by a bus stop. <laughs> And it's very close to Belleville Plaza. I mean, <laughs> what more can I ask? No, he didn't say that. He just did. Don't be like Jonah. Don't be like Jeremiah. But, oh, Father, I'm so young. Who will listen to me? You know how young Jeremiah was when he was called? But God reveals himself to the child of life. 